Hi, this is Tom, and welcome back to Bryn Mawr RC. This week we will be continuing building of the Tamiya CC01 Defender 90 kit. And today we're going to be finishing up steps 26 through 29. So that's um, tires, wheels, getting them on the body, and actually getting the battery in there and doing a little test run. So glad you could make it. Let's move right on to step 26. So step 26 is actually assembling the tires and the wheels. Uh, part of this step is to actually glue the, this is, this is common in RC tires, uh, if you don't have bead locking wheels, uh, is to actually glue the wheel, this part, sorry, glue this part of the tire to the wheel. I'm not going to do that as uh, soon I will actually be replacing these tires with a non-kit tire. These are very hard and not very soft and, and to be good four-wheeler uh, or crawler, the tire should be much softer than it is. Take, for example, when you're actually going out four-wheeling, you typically, people lower the tire pressure in their tires. This is, again, to make the, the tire softer and grip more easily on terrain. I have made or put together three of them already. You can see here. I'll just do the fourth one here, and we'll move forward. Uh, so sometimes these wires, uh, these tires have specific direction and they'll show which direction they're made for because of the tread. These particular cheap kit tires uh, don't have direction. So we'll just pop these on. see that there is a slit or an area there for the side of the tire to be in. This one, we're on this side, we're too far. So we need to bring it back this way. There we go. And you can usually get a nice good click on these. And there we have it. Again, we're not going to be doing the gluing, but there are the four wheel tire combos for our Defender 90. This is getting exciting. We're getting close. So that was the step for the wheels and the tires, and that was number 26. So let's move on to 27. In step 27, we're going to be attaching the front wheels. I have got out everything I need for step 27, 28, and 29. So let's go ahead and begin. Again, we're attaching the front wheels. Step 27, this includes actually attaching the front bumper uh, and the wheels. So let's actually start, let's actually start with the wheels and then we'll do the bumper lastly. Okay, so to attach the wheels, we are actually going to be using some of the last uh, bearings. Again, this is calling for plastic bearings, but as we mentioned before, I'm using the Fast Eddy bearing kit. And these are pretty much the last two bearings for the kit. So let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and start that. We're only greasing the inside. I'm not sure. And I am just about out of grease. Just about out. Well, maybe not. There's plenty in there. That's probably too much. I'm sure other people do that more elegantly than I do. So... This one. 
Okay, we put that on, then we put one of the rods in. So I'm not sure if you can see this, but there is a little hole through the axle here. There we go, we got that. <clears throat> and then we got C1, which I forgot to get C1. Let me grab those, I missed one item. Okay, I neglected to get these two parts, which I should know the name of these parts, but effectively they are between the bearing and the rest of the axle and the wheel. So if I knew more about cars, I would know what these things are called, but I don't. I had to trim off the sharp bit there and we'll put this on. It's really on there, so I've been using a pair of side cutters. Oh, much easier. Alrighty then, so on this side, we can put a wheel on. There we have it. And we can actually put on And we can actually attach the wheel. Here it is. And that's probably tight enough. Let's spin this around and I'll finish up the rest of these four and get back to you when it's done. Okay, there we have it. Here are the two front wheels. Wheels and tires placed on. And uh, I thought I'd take this time to show you now, visually show you the difference between a locked differential and a non-locked differential. Remember, both the front and back differentials are locked. Here is the lock differential. I'm spinning this wheel and you see this wheel is moving with it. I hold this wheel and I try to spin this wheel and I can't. They are they are both they are locked together. Now let me show you on another model an open differential. Uh, this model here is my Tamiya M03 the M03 chassis, and it's the Mini Cooper. This is a front wheel drive model, and it has open differential. So uh, one thing to notice on the locked differential, I'm moving this wheel to me clockwise, and that wheel is also moving in the same direction clockwise. Here, clockwise. Here is an open, uh, yeah, an open diff, Front wheel drive, oops, sorry. Yeah, front wheel drive. Here I am spinning this tire to me clockwise. The other wheel is moving in the other direction. If I stop that wheel from moving, 
this one still moves. So open differential versus a locked. Uh, let's continue with the other four wheels. <clears throat> the other two wheels, the rear wheels. So now that's actually starting to look like a vehicle, huh? So one item I neglected to do was to set the end point adjustment for the steering. And what this is, is setting up the radio and the receiver to not allow the servo to be pushed beyond maximum. If you may have noticed in some of the shots when I was turning some of the video when I was turning far left or far right you could hear the servo struggling a little bit um, uh, the we were, I was allowing the servo to be pushed further than it the steering can mechanically do as well I think the servo is pretty weak and old and I probably should get a, another one maybe I'll do that next week but uh, so I dialed down the right and left in point adjustment for the steering to the following. So I'm holding it far left. You can see the steering doesn't change very much, but uh, the servo is not angry with me right now holding it to the left. Now here's right. Right goes a little further. Again, I think that's just a poor setup on this crazy model. And um, you can hear that the servo right now is not struggling. So, now you can hear it struggling a little bit when I put it down, and I think just because this is there's just not enough uh, enough uh, foot inches. I think it's foot inches of power from this servo. Okay, so that's in-point adjustment setting for the steering. And as you can see here, EPA is in-point adjustment. I'm on, there's the left. And I have it at 65%. And there's right, and I have it at 65%. I might be able to put it a little higher, but I just, I just don't want to get too carried away. Time for our first test outside. Let's give this a try. Looks like I, looks like I should do a little bit of yard work, huh? So the steering radius on this thing is terrible. We expected that. Let's just give it a little try on these rocks. This is a very poor crawler. It's sold as a crawler, but it's not a very good one.
I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but that right front wheel does not look right to me. I cannot make that thing look straight. Well, everyone, that's going to do it for today. This is Tom. Thank you for joining. As always, and see you again next week.